Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Welcome to the Telworks Business Series, our monthly workshop where we are working to help you understand the technology that's available to your business and how it can help you be better. Uh, as usual, as usual, I'd like to just start real quick by thanking the Glendora and Whittier Chambers of Commerce for their support, not only of this series of workshops, but even more so all of the support that they give to the local business communities. You guys are doing some really great work out there and we appreciate it. Now, when it comes to your business, the success and productivity of your business, when you really start drilling down into things, it usually comes down to internet and network connectivity um, and the health of your network. I heard a story once that, um, you know, just a local coffee shop, they, they lost their internet connectivity and about the only thing they could do was make coffee. <laughs> they couldn't actually ring up an order. They couldn't uh, process anything. They, they were pretty much dead in the water without that, uh, that network infrastructure um, working properly. And uh, that's why this morning I'm really, really excited to welcome Clinton Devereaux and Steve Mooney from Airspring. They are um, network technology experts and specifically in the area that we're going to be discussing today of, uh, of SD-WAN. So with that, gentlemen, I will turn it over to you and uh, take it away. Well, thank you, John. Um, Clinton and I are very happy to be here on behalf of Eric Spring. Um, my name is Steve Mooney. I'm the channel manager that supports John and his entourage. Um, Clinton, he's a smart guy on the block. He's going to uh, correct me when I'm incorrect, and he's going to get into some um, applications and kind of put some real uh, life stories in there. So, uh, Christina, anybody else that's on board, this is for you guys. So, any questions, okay. don't feel free to interrupt because... I'm a sales guy. I'm going to start talking when my, you know, I get tired, which will be next Wednesday. <laughs> so, um, the goal here is to give you an overview in this next 60 minutes on Airspring. Um, as I pulled up on the screen, uh, basically, um, as an organization, we were founded in 2001. Um, Family-owned business, debt-free Um largest SIP network in the United States. We process over 6 billion calls, process over 6 billion calls a month for any large network. Um, and as we go through um, the internet, you know, in today's world, everybody's looking for a fiber pipe. They're looking for a secondary circuit depending geographically where you are, is that cable, is it fixed wireless, is it another fiber pipe, right? But I think a large part of what we're gonna dive into today is the SD-WAN. And I wanna go back in time a little bit. And we used to all focus on voice. Oh my God, if the voice goes down, the world comes to an end, what are we going to do? How do we fail over to the three copper lines or from site A to site B? Well, we all got that redundancy down pat where the world turned to, especially with so much VoIP cloud um, phone systems out there nowadays. What you really need is your bandwidth and how to keep that bulletproof as possible. And Clinton's getting to do a deep dive on SD-WAN. But again, please open up. Let's ask as many questions as possible. Um, I'm also going to finish up a little bit. Um, I just want to, I want you guys to know, one of the best things about Airspring is that we use agents to sell our services. I don't have a direct sales force. If the account management that works for Airspring sells into one of your accounts, you just got to raise, okay? So there's no conflict. And if any of you've been with other organizations, that is not typical. So um, a really big, in my eyes, a big win 
is the quality of our organizations. We have three brothers that run the company. And when I say it's a family run business, it's truly a, a family run business. It's debt free. Um, a few other things that I wanted to bring up were some of the new people that we have brought on board over the last uh, three, four years, uh, starting with Rush Shipley as our COO. He ran uh, Telepacific or TPX um, for 18 plus years, and we're really excited to bring him over. Um, Mike James is another one that we've recently brought over to run our back office, our account management, our customer experience. Because let's be honest, you know, as long as we install and we're paying you guys, it's all the minutiae in the middle that's the, the key part. And we've brought over the who's who in the industry, in my opinion, and that I've worked with in the past. And so we're super happy to have uh, that group on board. Um, another thing that is really critical is we cover the United States. So it, doesn't really matter who's where. For example, Clinton, you are located, if I'm not mistaken, in Maryland. Is that That's correct? Right. Yes, I'm okay. in Campbell's, Maryland. Yeah, I'm in Sacramento, California. I mean, everything's web-based. We're all on Zoom calls, right? And the, the nice thing, in my opinion, is that we have um, coverage regardless of where you are geographically. So, um, basically, that's it about most of the team, and I think now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over to Clinton, and we're going to do a deeper dive into the technology that is known as SD-WAN and how VMware, Velo Cloud, we all have a lot of different names out there, but they basically are the leader in the industry, and why it is so important for us. We have Meraki, we also have Fortinet, but we start with the best of the best. And I can tell you 98% of the time, I'm usually with VeloCloud. It fits most of my customers. We can right size the tunnels, all the things Clinton's gonna get into. So with that being said, I'm going to stop talking, believe it or not, and turn this over to Mr. Clinton. <laughs> Well, thank you, Steve. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Clinton Devereaux. I'm a Director of Solutions Engineering at Airspring. I have a team of uh, six uh, solutions engineers with various uh, technical certifications in voice and data um, to help our agents, our channel managers, as well as our agents um, provide thought leadership and technical design uh, consultation to their customers. That's pretty much what I do. I'm also here to talk about SD-WAN today, one of my favorite products in the whole world. Because back in the day when I used to um, administrate in data centers, it was always a challenge with trying to separate all the traffic within those buildings, right? You've got hundreds and literally thousands of customers with all of their own traffic going every which way, right? And uh, part of the challenge was with encapsulating and or separating all that traffic um, from each other. And that's really where the, uh, the, the roots of SD-WAN or Software Defined Wide Area Networking come from. They come from the roots of Software Defined Networking, which was a, a play in the data center. Uh, to software define all the various virtual connections uh, between all of the resources within data centers and, and, and make it more extensible, user-friendly, right? And extensibility, I mean, it, being able to connect with other things, right, that it ordinarily wouldn't have been able to connect with, and also to extend the capability of that virtual fabric out beyond uh, where your physical fabrics could, could get, right? So, you know, that's where it all comes from. And now we're, we've been graced uh, with this technology via VMware um, uh, to use it as a consumer product. And we're going to talk about exactly how it helps a business by using a, uh, an analogy of a small business that uh, started uh, with, uh, you know, with rigid technology and uh, realized that it was no longer enough to, you know, to take them to the next level and that he, he had to change or basically go out of business. And a lot of businesses these days experience that with the digital revolution and the digital experience that all consumers like myself want to experience. 
Um, we, we want to be able to order online. We want to be able to check our statuses. We want to be able to do all these things on our own. We want digital agency. And that's what SDWAN brings to the table for businesses. So today we're going to talk about a small business um, run by a gentleman who's got his thumbs up. He's very happy at this point um, because we've solved his problems utilizing SDWAN. His name is Ramirez Chase, and he is a entrepreneur. Um, he has a, a business that he started back in the day um, called Carnoso Taco, right? And uh, let me tell you something, these, these tacos were amazing. He started off with a truck and uh, he used the best steak, the best flank steak, and he seasoned it beautifully and, and he grilled it beautifully. And, and when he made his tacos, they were just like works of art, you know? And, and when people bit into them, they felt the love that he put into them. So the guy became uber famous. His business began, began to expand like overnight, basically. And so what, what, what once was a regional uh, sort of business that was served out of a truck turned into the, the business case that we have here in front of us now. Um, you know, he's got a headquarters now in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, and he's got 15 regional sites now because he had to build his business. The, 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 the demand was so great customers want, well, when are you going to build one here? And when are you going to put one here? When are you going to put one there? And, and the stores would get inundated with, with customers, literally inundated. It's, it's kind of, it's a situation that businesses would love to have. But Ramirez knew that if he didn't change the way that he did business, if he didn't acquiesce and, 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 and accommodate his customers, right, that he would lose them, just like any business would. And so he realized that He's grown uh, quite quite a bit, and that he has to reevaluate the direction that he's taking his business from a technology perspective. He's got to reevaluate it. He has no choice. So um, you know, today uh, from from a food truck, now Ramirez has eighty employees. He's got fifteen regional stores, and he's got an HQ that he's renting right in a separate uh, office complex. Um, he owns the locations of his stores. He actually owns each one of, of his stores. And he, uh, with talks of a food truck fleet, he wants to create a fleet because that's where his roots were, right? The food truck. So now he's got these businesses everywhere. Now he wants to create a fleet of food trucks as well, right? So he can uh, deal with territory reach and catering. He's a powerhouse when it comes to cooking and dealing with his, you know, dealing with the customers and everything, but he just doesn't have the acumen to you know, to, to dig into the technology and find out what he needs to make his business better. So who do you call in situations like that? We're going to find out soon. Some food for thought for anyone on this call that's listening. We all know that grassroots businesses, it, they never happen. It's never a well-planned experience because, again, these people are they, 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 they are artists and they, they're in love with their art and they do things that other people happen to love, but they never, ever thought that most of them never think, well, gee, you know, how do I expand this, right? And, and, and build this out so that everybody can enjoy it. That becomes a problem for folks like that because they really just want to focus on the business, right? And so the business resources that, uh, that are needed today for a modern food truck and multiple stores in, in this digital age has changed drastically. And there are tons of tools available that could help, right? He realizes that, but getting to them requires a new strategy for his business. And scalability is often the last consideration when building a business from the ground up, meaning, you know, how can I continue to build them? Can I add on to it and make it bigger, right? The scalability, you got one block, two block, three blocks. You wanna make sure that your business model is scalable and your technology model for your business is scalable as well. So he's been doing that. Um, headquarters has been neglected while building out the retail stores. And he, and he soon realizes that technology is going to be needed to play a part in helping his company grow. He's going to need some help. So the question I asked earlier was, who do you go to when you don't know what to do for your business from a technology perspective? Well, <clears throat> you know, you call wonderful people at, at Teleworks. But before we do that, this is pretty much the, uh, th his business, and he's begging for help. He's showing you this, right? You're the sales guy. He's showing you, he's like, I, I need your help. What can you do for me? Look at that. 
I see, I see dollar signs. <laughs> Hopefully you do too. So how are we going to help Ramirez? He needs a consultant, right? He needs to. Be, he needs a consultant. He needs someone that is familiar with the industry, someone that has the uh, the associations and the relationships with different vendors that know the vendors and know what they offer, so that they can put together a package for Ramirez that will help take his business to the next level. That's a hey, Clinton. That's a great point because so. When, when, you're, when you're a sub-agent, you're out in the world and you're going from appointment to appointment, sometimes they don't have the ability to waste a day or two calling all the big uh, companies to find out what's out there. They can go to John and his team. He can narrow that down to the best three, four options for them mm -hmm. and do all the legwork and then you know, John will spin up a, a Zoom call or, or Sue, they can they can go ahead, set this up with Airspring or whatever companies out there. So they're doing all the hard labor, dirty work to get you to the final three, four options that then he or she can evaluate and find what they find is the best fit for their application. Absolutely, absolutely. So again, luckily for Ramirez, there's Telworks. <laughs> there's a place to go. There are people to ask, how do I get this done, Sue? How do I get this done, John? Somebody help me, please, right? And so he reached out to Telworks and he got a great representative and uh, you know, that's gonna walk him through his growing pains and provide the thought leadership, keywords, right? Thought leadership regarding the technologies that will benefit his current business and scale as his business grows. Because from the looks of his business, he's got a lot more growing to do, right? He's just sort of around Fort Worth, Texas area, but you know, everybody loves tacos. Where else can he go? He can go international, right? So now that he's linked up with someone at Telworks, he's linked up with a wonderful representative at Telworks to help him through this debacle. Let's see what Telworks does. You know, let's see what they, how they walk him through this, this technology challenge that Carnoso, Carnoso Taco has, All right? So basically the consultant's very knowledgeable and they help Ramirez understand that he's been scaling his business with rigid technology. Now, rigid technologies are technologies that don't necessarily scale very well, right? They don't necessarily fit um, in with the, uh, the, with the latest technologies for various reasons most often because they're older technologies, right? And they just don't fit in anymore. Um, and so, you know, Ramirez made the mistake of, of scaling his business and building up all those stores. He did one good thing was he created a template, right? He created a template for the stores. And then as he opened up each store, he just said, boop, dip, boop, boop, right? He created that template across all the stores. But again, he did it with very rigid technology, POTS lines and broadband that didn't address the issues of cost, right, uptime, and availability and scalability, again, being able to grow and actually grow and, and, and uh, go the opposite direction, right? Scalability works both ways. So each store was a template of the first store, four analog lines. I give you an example over on the side, four analog lines and a broadband connection to support the uh, point of sale system. The point of sale system has a server which sits at the corporate office, right? Wi-Fi was later added at the remote stores to share the broadband there, but the poor quality of the available broadband internet at the headquarters caused problems with the point of sale system and the VPNs from each of the devices in the remote stores, right? So each of the point of sales uh, terminals at each of the stores, at the end of the day, they batch upload right? They batch upload their uh, sales to the server at headquarters, right? Where the, the net server batch uploads itself to the, uh, to the vendor, right? And that's how a lot of the older systems worked. Um, and because of the bandwidth at the headquarters where the server was that all of these remote locations needed to VPN into to get their, you know, to batch upload their files at the end of the day, right? He had poor broadband at this uh, headquarters location that connection suffered, right? And he would get stops, stops and hiccups and all kinds of terrible things. And uh, it's terrible when your batch uploads for your point of sale system doesn't work, right? 
I mean, you might be missing, uh, you know, transactions. It's a scary thing. Ramirez was horrified that this was happening and he needed something to, to change it. Um, and then there were the loop outages, right, for both the voice and the broadband that caused all kinds of issues. We're talking, you know, the PSTN up here on the uh, upper on the upper uh, left hand corner here, where all this analog lines come into the public switch telephone network. That's PSTN stands for. Thanks for Please? speaking English. <laughs> yeah, and Clinton, if if I if you don't mind my interrupting real quick, um, also, sure. what is a VPN and why does someone use use that technology? Right. So the the uh, so virtual private networking, oh, VPN uh -huh. technology. <laughs> yeah, VPN technology <laughs> is a way of using, uh, creating an overlay, and you're going to hear that term again when we talk about SD-WAN, creating an overlay, right, over a uh, over um, an internet connection, using it as an underlay. So basically, what a VPN is, is, is it's an encapsulated tunnel, right, it's completely secure because it uses military-grade encryption between two devices, Right, to create a, a, a secure tunnel between those two devices that you can then pass IP traffic through. So that's okay. pretty much what a VPN yeah, is. Yeah, private network that doesn't go out to the scary uh, World Wide Web. Yeah, okay. it, it goes, it punches through the World Wide Web and it's, in, it's encrypted okay. so the World Wide Web can't see what's going through it. Right, yeah, so that, that's what a VPN is. Um, and then the loop outages, right? The loops are basically the lines that are coming from the... Um, the carriers, right, that come into the business that serve the dial tone for his phones, right? Um, and you can see that, uh, you know, it's quite rigid. It's come, it comes in over 25 pair cables. And you've all heard the stories about the, the construction companies out there with the backhoes, right? And they may rip up a cable. They may, they may even rip up fiber sometimes. But because this service is so rigid, if a cable, when, whenever the cable has issues from rust, right? Uh, force majeure, right? Acts of God blows down telephone poles, his lines are out, right? Uh, um, and things like that. Uh, so it was terrible. It's a terrible experience. And I don't know if you guys, if you lived in Texas, but Texas had some rough weather, right? Um, and so this guy was, he, yeah. was experiencing outages all the time because of the technology that he was using. He had no remediation, right? There was nowhere else to go. Right to solve for it because of the rigid technology. But if you look down, um, you know he's got his internet connectivity there, bringing in a cable, right? Because cable is relatively cheap. But cable services are are inexpensive for a reason, uh, because most of the time, because they are considered asymmetrical, right? Meaning that you get a faster download than you do an upload. And uh, you know, again, full disclosure, that has nothing to do with the technology. That is uh, an effort of ISPs throttling, right, your connections. There's no reason why, if something can give you something, a bandwidth in one direction, why it couldn't in the other, right? That Those are efforts of that ISPs. Yeah, yeah, it totally makes sense. Yeah, that's that just, true. yeah, that's to keep the price <laughs> down and make it competitive because what, what you're going to see where Clinton gets into, um, where you have a primary and a secondary pipe, that works in conjunction with the SD-WAN, but I think the opportunity for the subagents today is your copper's going away, right? Nobody yeah. wants T1s. Ethernet over copper, which was the greatest thing since sliced bread 10 years ago, that, that thing's <laughs> in the parking lot. That, that thing's, that, that's toast. So now cable you know, was kind of a little bit better version of DSL. And people took it if, you know, they didn't want to spend that 1000 thousand, fifteen hundred 1500 bucks on fiber. Now, price went down um, on fiber, plus you bring in the cable. So there's a lot of other bandwidths fighting over the same uh, customers, so to mm -hmm. speak. Yeah. Uh, with the technology you're going to see is why it made it so much more important. So when you're talking to that customer, you have fixed wireless, you have 4G failover, you have cable, you have fi uh, fiber and et cetera, going on and on and on. Just geographics plays such a big part in bandwidth. That's why you go to Sue and John because they can tell you, oh, this location, 
we can get AT&T and Spectrum. This right. location, we have Cox and Frontier or whatever it is. You might not even know. Exactly. <laughs> and it changes oh, daily. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because they have tools uh, and we have tools and we share our tools with them because <laughs> they're our <laughs> friends. <laughs> so to that point, and, 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 and Steve, uh, that's a very good point. Um, and a, a lot of times why folks use cable is because of availability. You know, cable companies uh, manage to sort of get themselves into residences, they built themselves out, they spent tons of money um, as a public utility building themselves out and creating, ultimately what it was for was for TV back in the day, right? We know that. And then they said, hey, we can send packets over this stuff. <laughs> and, and, and the capacity of cable does allow you to carry a lot more bandwidth because of the medium itself. It's a, it's a cable, right? So the medium itself and the equipment connected to this, these mediums allowed for greater bandwidth, right? The availability of bandwidth. You could send video and also internet over this as well. And because it was in everybody's house, Holy cow, Comcast raked up, right? Spectrum, all those guys. We're going to sell to our TV customers. We've already got the customers already. So that's really how cable sort of propagated itself. And because of its bandwidth capability as well, greater than DSL and some of those other uh, technologies. Because well, and also your bandwidth. cable companies also have deep pockets and no debt. So that's why they can build that infrastructure as opposed to, and I'm not picking on any Verizon or at and I mean, the cost of their equipment to maintain it and upgrade it is a very, very expensive. Yeah. So the cable companies literally have really laid out a great business plan that we're going to show you how that's going to work yeah. in conjunction <laughs> together. Exactly. So again, uh, we, we've, we've felt all the pain. We, we've taken a look at his network, right? All of his stores are similar to this. They're, they're cookie cutter. And so the problems that exist in one store eh, kind of sort of happen with other stores. The internet going out, right? He has no way of doing his point of sales, right? When that cable modem goes out, when those phone lines have issues, he can't even take phone calls. He can't take orders, right? He can't get fax orders in either. He's got a fax. He's, he's sort of dead in the water and he's got no remediation. So how do we solve this? The consultant from Teleworks was amazing, you know, and gave uh, Ramirez some of the best consultation on the planet. And we want to see how she worked her, uh, navigated her way through Ramirez's problems. So first of all, I have to explain how SD-WAN works. That's how you understand, understanding how SD-WAN works gives you an understanding of how to use it. It's almost like I, if I said, hey, um, you know, a car, you know, works a particular way. You, you, you take that car and you start using it for other things. You maybe haul stuff in it, right? Maybe you'd use it for other things. But, but that's sort of how this technology works. Once you learn what it can do, that's how it gives you the power of creating solutions. Right. And it's very important for you to know how this works in order to have conversations with customers about it. Um, so I'm going to give you a very quick overview of how SD-WAN works. It's going to be non-technical. It's going to be anecdotal. And if you have questions about anything that I say, please ask. So the consultant from Teleworks came in and basically razzle-dazzled Ramirez. He's like, wow, OK, I'm excited about what you're saying. How does it work, right? That's what I'm gonna say, how does it work, right? From a, from a high level. Well, consultant said, sure, let's go, let's go for it. So the SD-WAN for VeloCloud that we're talking about in particular has three critical components to it. There are just three components, real easy to understand. The orchestrator, right? The edge, and then the gateway, okay? The orchestrator is the portal that myself and even customers go into, right, to administrate their WAN. After all of these edges that you see over here, right, which exist at every site, every customer site, right, because they have to be there in order to create the WAN, right, to secure WAN, right, between the other locations, 
right? And by WAN, you mean wide area network. Wide area network, I'm sorry, yes. And then, uh, then the, the edges have to exist at each one of the locations. And then you have the gateways. The functionality for each one of these things is, is pretty easy to understand. The, the, the orchestrator is a thing, again, that you go into. It's a portal. And it allows you to control and, and create and, and administrate your wide area network. I'll show you what that looks like. You'll be able to see all of your edge devices, all these little boxes in all the locations on a map, right? And they'll be red or green, meaning bad or good. I'm having problems, not having problems. And then it gives you a, a way to drill down into each one of the boxes that are located at a location and see how they're performing individually. It also gives you the ability to go in and create what are called business policies, which we're going to talk about in a second. So you have the ability to, to dictate how your traffic leaves and comes back into your, into your network. And we're going to talk about how that works in a second. So you got those three, uh, I'm sorry, the orchestrator, again, is the, uh, the portal. And then you have the edge device, which sits at each one of the location, right, that creates the wide area network, that virtual wide area network between all of these locations. Now, when you have, when you create a, a private network, a virtual private network, VPN, right, between different locations, you got to give folks a way off of it, right? Otherwise, it's just, you're just going between locations, right? Well, where do you go from there? right? The gateway, that's the function of the gateway. The gateway is the secure off-ramp for the SD-WAN. Because remember, the SD-WAN is created, it's an overlay, right? Using internet connections as an underlay. So it builds itself up over internet connections, securely creates a secure tunnel, encrypted tunnel between itself and its other, uh, other edges, and it's the other edges and the gateway. And then the, gate, the gateways are used to um, off-ramp traffic from the uh, from the SD WAN securely. Okay. So One point, are... Clinton, I wanted to make on the edge, just you know, not to get too technical, but just think of it as a smart router, right? That's exactly is, what it is. Is is basically what the SD WAN, Velo Cloud, VMware. It's got a hundred names, but it's a really latest technology smart router. Yeah, it's a, it's a smart router, exactly. And again, each one of these devices has to exist at each one of the locations, right? Because it needs to be there in order to create the, the WAN to that site, right? So those are the three components. You got an orchestrator, you have an edge device, and then you have the gateways, which off-ramp the, the uh, secure connections between the, uh, the edges, right? Or on your wide area network. So it should be easy enough to understand. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question on that gateway? Is that so just all the locations can talk to each other or get all the data? Or is that for customers to go into that gateway and order? No, the gateway is actually, I... yeah, the gateway is actually a, um, a, it's a server that takes all of the, all of the edges are connected to the gateway as well as to themselves. So you can just imagine this okay. entire mesh of tunnels like that are occurring. Freeway. Like right. a freeway. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. And, and so it's for all the stores to connect uh, securely. Exactly. To each other. Okay. And right. also to the gateway. Because remember, if you want to get somewhere up to the internet, right, of, off of the SD WAN, because remember that, that, that's, that WAN, that secure WAN that's created is completely encrypted and encapsulated. No one can get in and you can't get out of it. The okay. only way to get out of it is through a gateway. Now, that's only through the SD-WAN. I'm going to show you a couple of things that should help, um, help clarify uh, some things. Because we're getting into the con conceptual part of, the, uh, of the, uh, the presentation. This is the orchestrator that we were looking at before, right? So you can see where that sits in context with the rest of the, uh, you know, the, the devices, the, the gateways, the orchestrator. And then the, the orchestrator is really just a website that you go to okay. that shows you everything, right? Hey, and this Clinton, is- Clinton, can you, can you talk a little bit about the gateways that we haven't built and they're, they're right to VMware, right? So we have our customized gateways, not everybody that sells SD-WAN yeah, has that. Yeah, I was gonna get into that, but okay. to, to, John, <laughs> to Steve's point, right. Um, uh, our competitors 
use public gateways that are provided by VMware. These gateways are located throughout the world and they're on the edge of the internet. They're in major, um, major uh, data centers all over the world, right? And they're, they're there to, um, to provide the, um, a way for the SD-WANs that are being created out there uh, to get out to the internet. And, and each person that has an SD-WAN gets their own, um, their own off-ramp, their own private off-ramp on those gateways. And it actually happens when the, uh, the, the topology right, of the SD-WAN is built in the orchestrator. But to Steve's point, Airspring owns, we own our own gateways. Right, and we have tons of them located all throughout the world. Now, what makes us special, we, we can do some things that other folks can't do. Because the gateways are located in our data centers, we can then off ramp your SD WAN to managed services that we provide. So we can use your SD WAN to connect you securely, right, and give you link remediation for your UCAS services, your voice, because we sell you, we sell voice, we sell UCAS. Um, unified communications as a service, which is basically your hosted PBXs of the world, right? Um, and we do sell that. So you can imagine that this technology is a benefit for us because now we can take inexpensive internet connections, right? That may not be that great, connect them to a box that can bond them together and make them better, right? With, uh, with, um, you know, packet duplication and other technologies. Proof jitter. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, and it, it, imp it actually improves the connection because it, it creates these tunnels as an overlay over those internet connections that are protected. And those tunnels go directly either to each VCE or edge, right? Or they go directly to the gateway. There's no obscurity of packet routing, right? That you would get with through your ISP. Because when you send a, a packet out through your ISP, you have no idea where that traffic is going. None. They may be busy. Comcast, the network may be busy. And they may be sending your traffic up to Canada so that you can get back to um, someone in Florida. You, you never know. SD-WAN creates tunnels, direct tunnels, right, uh, between each other that go over all of the connections that are connected to it. So that even if one of these links goes down, if you're on a voice call and one of your internet connections go down, the, the, the VeloCloud router has a really, really fast remediation. It's under two milliseconds. So your, your connection won't drop. If you're in the middle of a, of, a, of a service and you're connected to QuickBooks or something like that, and um, one of your links fails, it, it won't drop. Your screen won't, uh, won't freeze uh, because you've got multiple sessions going to the same destination all the time. Your state table doesn't break. And I know I'm getting into some, some funky language here, but the, uh, the technology works in that way so that you're getting link remediation, right? You're failing over to different connections. Right? And also you're getting that bonding of the, of the two connections that you have or the two or three, four or five different connections that you have connected to the box. And Steve was mentioning earlier too that the boxes are really flexible. They, they accept ethernet and fiber, but they will use any connection that you plug into them. It could be wireless, um, fixed wireless, uh, you know, uh, you know, a 5G. If you've got a 5G modem, it can use that too, as well as MPLS. Right, you, you guys have maybe heard of multi-protocol label switching. It's an older technology um, that folks used to use. Um, other than SD-WAN, to connect to connect locations together, we can connect into that and use that for link remediation as well. So anyway, this, this, there isn't there aren't too many technologies that this box cannot use to fail over to. So you've got tons of options now where you didn't have before, and you've got this device that not only bond your connections together now, right? So you can take 250 megs and make them 100 meg, literally, right? Within that tunnel. And also if one of them fails, guess what? All your traffic goes over to the, uh, the one that's available and you can have a tertiary if you want, maybe even a fourth one. 
So this box does all of your network remediation, right? It's handling everything. Also what it does too, by virtue of this, this is the orchestrator that you would uh, log into. It, it is a co-managed solution from AirSpring. So we will give you access to this read only or read write if you want it. We have customers of varying levels. We got some customers that are very technical and want to know and want to play. Others, I don't want to be bothered. You do it. It's your druthers. But we provide you with access into this portal so that you can see your WAN. And you can see how it's performing. And that you can go into this also, and we can go into it and create what are called business policies. This, is, this really excites me here. Let me show you why this is such a big deal. So we went through all the different components. I'm going to flash forward and, and, yeah, and all the different connection types that you can connect it to that box. This is what's exciting for me. And I know this is a little busy. I know this is a, a slide is just a tad busy. But imagine if you will, you have an SD-WAN appliance, you have a box and um, your site, you, you, your site's running fine, right? Everything's great. And then all of a sudden an earthquake happens. God forbid, no one, no one was hurt. But you have to move your business quickly now. Right? You've got to move it. You've got to go somewhere else and work. Oh, boy. Under normal, normal circumstances, you'd have to get new internet connections with new ISPs. Your IP addresses are going to change, right? And that's usually a pain. You have to re-IP your entire network. If you've got VPNs, virtual private networks coming in from other locations, right? They're going to need to know your IP address change. So there's a lot of administrative overhead with this change. That's the reason why guys like me don't like making those changes in case <laughs> you didn't know. It's not that we're lazy. We're lazy. <laughs> we don't like making all those changes. But with SD-WAN, what we do is we give you a static public IP address. We can give you as many as you want. Right? So that regardless of where you take that box and regardless of the internet providers that you plug into it, that IP address follows you. It creates the overlay, right? Because SD-WAN doesn't care what internet provider you're using. It literally doesn't care. It just wants to be able to reach out and find that gateway, right? Which are located all over the world in all your major data centers, right? So all so Clinton, the- Clinton, I want to interject really quick here. So this is a really important point. So Clinton brought up some MPLS technology. If there's any out there, SD-WAN's pretty much replacing. Yeah. But the, the key here is, okay, so you have multiple locations and I'm just gonna pick a couple random ones. So we have San Antonio and let's say in San Antonio, we're gonna give it at and fiber and we're gonna have, um, I don't know, Cox, um, or spectrum uh, cable. cable. Okay. Now, in Louisiana, we don't have those companies. But to Clinton's point and why this is critical, it doesn't matter what you plug in there. We give you the static IP, the two pipes. At one site could be satellite and cable. Another site could be, or big site could be a big pipe with a 500 meg fiber backup on a separate carrier, right? So it, it the application drives, you can have a Gannon string or you can have a bulletproof double fiber network over here. It doesn't matter. In three years, you need to, you're at a contract on that fiber and you wanna switch companies. We don't care what you call it, what color, you know, <laughs> pants or shirt they're matching or wearing, it's irrelevant, right? And this is the key to this technology um, where geographics drive bandwidth. But the, the SD-WAN box says, I don't care. You plug that in A, you plug that in B, you got double, you got true redundancy. If A follow, if fails, B takes over. And to Clinton's point, in that scenario, let's say that the pipe A is a massive fiber pipe, it's one gig. Backup's a little coax, you know, it's 200 by 10, all right? Well, when we fall over, we're gonna put business rules in there that not everything's going through the cable, because if it does, you know, 
we're, we're, we're in a log jam on the freeway. We're not going anywhere because there's an accident. Okay. Whereas if we're able to go ahead and say these three things have to go through this pipe, then they have access to go through there and function. Hopefully that made sense. Did, was I clear on that? You want, you want to restate yeah. what I was uh, coming to the end there on, Clinton, to make sure? I think sometimes it's good to have an engineer's point and a salesperson's point. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why this slide is, is so important, because you, once you understand that the box itself, that public IP address that follows it, I, I mean, that, that was a dream to me. Uh, you know, when you're an IT guy and you, realize, and you know that I, I can actually plug this box into any internet company I want, and I'm going to get this same IP address no matter where I am in the world? Yes. I don't have to re-IP my network? No. <laughs> you mean I can use this for disaster recovery? I could just pick up my box? Yes. <laughs> it's just, it's an amazing technology in that way. And, and what Steve mentioned was about the business policies. Because think about it like this. You've got physical connections coming in from internet providers that are plugging into the box. The box is using them for remediation. One go down, I go to the other. That one go down, I go to the other. Oh, I want to bond them together, make them big pipe, right? Okay, great, right? But you've also got this deep application recognition engine that exists. It's, it's actually backed up by big data platforms on the back end. There are over three to 4,000 different applications being, you know, that, that, um, you know, that, that, that are being recognized. And then that, that list is growing every single day. So there's this huge edge network intelligence that's going on in the background. Because it's not only taking, you know, a, a, a sample of your network, but it's also looking at other networks too. And that back end is saying, hey, this was the best solution, right? Or the best way to treat this kind of application traffic based on this particular one, maybe you might want to do this too. So it gives you, you know, uh, ideas right about how to augment and uh, and tame your network to get it uh, exactly where you need it but you have the option you've got you got two connections going into the box and then you have that tunnel it's called multipath so when you send traffic out over the isp directly because think about it, you've got two connections in the box you can choose to send traffic to one of those internet providers if you want right but then you can also choose to route that traffic over that protected tunnel as well, which it, which uses ISP A and B, right, as its overlay, as its underlay, I'm sorry. And, and you've got this public IP address that follows that, that connection, you know, that multipath connection, no matter where the box is placed. So you basically have two physical connections and a virtual connection, right, that is created over the physical connection. And that vir virtual connection doesn't care what physical connections you use. Like to Steve's point, Steve's point, it doesn't matter if it's Cox, Spectrum, whatever, it just doesn't care. It just wants to get to the internet and find its gateway and establish its topology, you know, route reflect and establish its mesh between all of its peers and create that SD-WAN for you. And hey, another point I really wanted to bring up too, in this scenario, let's use... Um, Johnny's in the mail room and he listens to uh, Pandora all day long on his radio. He's eating up the bandwidth for the company and they might have trouble functioning. Or, you know, somebody could be watching World Cup soccer, or, you know, you can wherever you want to go. But a lot of times they chew up bandwidth. So you can set the rules and say, okay, this guy's going to get 1% of the bandwidth. He's never going to see that World Cup soccer game. Okay. Yes. Or he's not going to have Pandora. He's going to shut it off. You can either block it or let him through in this scenario with such low percentage, he's never going to connect. So there's a lot of things you can do that way. So I just thought that's something that I always like to bring up at the same time. Um, hey, John, Sue, Christina. Um, we're about five minutes to 11. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you guys have specific questions? Do you want us to continue um, until 11? Or do you guys have points you would like to ask or bring up right now? I, I don't. I just am enjoying learning. So. <laughs> 
be quiet, Steve, and let me talk. All right. So, <laughs> just kidding. Not kidding. Um, I'm going to jump in with this real quick, gentlemen. Um, we do have some hard outs at 11 o'clock, uh, okay. so we can we can go for another four minutes. Um, but then we'll go ahead and call yeah, it at 11. Through. Okay. okay. I'm going to. I'm going to speed through what Steve was just talking about was uh, part of the orchestrator. This is the orchestrator that we're, we're seeing right now on my screen. This is what you would have your customers would have access to right after the SD WAN has been set up. These are all of my boxes and these are all of his stores, so to speak. Right. Um, this is my my lab, my solutions engineering laboratory, and we have edges. We have different models. I got one in El Salvador. Right? And I can actually go up to the uh, to the network overview and to the edges, and you can see right on the map where all of my edges are. Right there's there's me right there in Maryland. Right there's the Maryland farm, and then over here on the west coast, I've got two guys. My my uh, primary solutions engineer Chuck Long, he's got one, and then I have two of them in a lab in a uh, a data center up in Los Angeles. You can see, all right? So you can dig in, right, and drill down and look and see, you know, all of your your edges. And like I said, if it's green, it's good, <laughs> right? It's green. I got a big green dot there. I'm good. So what's going on in the Maryland farm, right? So I can see all of my edges. That's fantastic. And I can, you know, show the purple is with when they're in groups, and then you have to click on it and drill down to the individuals. But what's going on? In the Maryland and at the Maryland farm, what, what can I see by virtue of this? Well, what what Steve was talking about earlier was the business policy, and there are different uh, profiles that you can use to go into and then dictate your business policy on your box. I'm actually logged into my box here at my house right now, and you can see the different business policies that are that are already created. And I got some for Netflix. I can push Netflix up to the top, right? If I want, and hit save changes, right? Now Netflix is at the top of my priority list. If there are applications that I want at the top of my priority list that, that aren't in here, I can create them. My right? source and destination IP port protocol, I can create them if they don't exist. But as they go through the as they go through the edge, the edge recognizes them and categorizes them itself, right? And treats them as in, in the way that they need to be treated based on their stack. So hey, this Clint, is the, hey, Clinton. Yeah. So we got we got one minute left. I want to get a couple things out there. Um, so when we talk about redundancy, okay, we've talked about the circuits failing over. You can also do high availability on the box. Yeah. So what that means in English is we have two boxes at one site. One one uh, pipe goes into box A. One pipe goes into box B. They fail over and work interchange. You don't have a single point of failure. So that's a really important process. Another thing is we don't charge you for the SD-WAN box. Most everybody I'm aware of charges you. All we do is charge you for the tunnel that you want. And again, in a smaller location might have a 30 meg tunnel. Headquarters in wherever might have a gig. So we can customize each and every SD-WAN box. But the thing is, A, our chief data technical guy sits on the board for VMware. So we like a feature, we bring it up. Next rollout, it's on there. It's happened three times in the year I've, since I've been uh, uh, in the last year that I've been here. So what I'm starting to see here is we have great quality. We're very cost effective. And we have somebody on the inside at VMware who is, as we, if you look at SD-WAN as a technology, in the Gartner quadrant, it's going to show you that VMware VeloCloud is number one and has been for most of the whole time. So it, it's 1101. Um, we might have went over. Uh, I don't know what the fines are, but you, you let me know, John. And uh, <laughs> I want to thank you and Sue and my smarter, uh, better looking half Clinton. I appreciate you tremendously for helping out as well and running the show. 
Yep. And so to, to you know, to close everything up, out with the old <laughs> and in with the new. <laughs> The old, you mean me? That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, I did. I actually had a great little sort of line. I don't think we had enough time. I, I was so <laughs> I was chomping at the bit to talk a, a lot more about this stuff. But you know, hopefully, we can do this again. Yeah, John, we we can do part two and kind of pick it up from where we left off and go. Believe me, this guy can go way deeper technically. I mean, it's a foreign language, trust me. But I'll, I'll be here to translate his. Uh, his verbiage into English <laughs> or non, non telekinetes. <laughs> yeah. But there's the elegance. Uh, we right. took a, I mean, we took a wreck. <laughs> it took a wreck of a, of a network and at, at each site, it's got two completely separate technologies switched and internet and we combined them together. Obviously there was a lot of consultation that went on right between the Telworks uh, uh, rep and, and the customer. They switched them over to UCAS, right? <laughs> Uh, you know, got rid of the fax machine and gave them uh, fax over email, right? Email fax, e-fax. Um, they did a lot of different things, but they basically created a more elegant topology for him, one that can scale and grow no matter how big he gets, right? He's just going to be able to scale and grow. And if he needs more bandwidth, add another link, you know? It's, he's, he's solved his problems thanks to Telworks. <laughs>